It's really one of the easiest weaves to learn. Skip three and then one, two, three, four, five. It's starting to go back into itself here. That's what we see here that's going on. Skip three and then one, over, under, over, five. Now when you get to these tight areas, remember that the leaf can break if you try to thread it in. Like if I tried to push this through right here, it would probably break right there. So what I'm going to do is use the end of the leaf where it's less chance of it breaking. They're more flexible at the end. So skip three, weave over and under five using the skinny end of the leaf. And once you get it there, you could pull it through carefully. You always got to help guide the leaf. Skip three, one, two, three and then weave over and under five. Yeah, depending how long the leaf is or how wide it is determines what you can make. You just can't take any leaf and make any item. They have to be a certain length and width. So I'm still skipping the three and then going over and under five using the skinny end of the leaf. And once it's through, carefully guide the leaf as you pull it through you don't break it. And then the last one's the same as the first. Let's see that from over my shoulder. You might get a better perspective. Skip the first three and then weave over, under, over, and under five. Now you can make room if the leaf is bunching together. You could help the leaf and separate it a little by pushing it to the side. But once it's through, and there it is. And once you have them all through, you want to tighten it carefully and adjust it as you're tightening it. That's what I'm doing on the edge here. I'm adjusting the edge and then tightening it. Some leaf will cooperate better than others, but however many times you need to adjust it, you just make the adjustment. If you see the leaf bending the wrong way, for instance, that's bending the wrong way, that's bending the wrong way, so I'm going to adjust it so that it bends correctly. Yeah. All the way around. This part you could use your eye and see what needs to be tightened more and what needs to be less tightened. But this is pretty much done. That's all done. Now when you get to this part, you might notice that some of the leaves are out like this. You know, some of them might be a little stray. So what you do is you put them underneath like that. And once they're all lined up like that, you could bring it together with your hands and then turn it over like an onion, just like we did on the first basket. Then you take one out and in the direction it points, in this case it's going counterclockwise. So you count in front of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 16. This is the 16th one. So half of 16 is 8. So we're going to go in front of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pull the 8th one out a little bit. And thread 16 through. And anchor it. This is just a temporary anchor here. This will hold the leaf so it doesn't fly back out. And then you go behind number 8, which would be 7. 8, 7 and behind 16 to 15, and you do the same, except you don't have to anchor it anymore. The first anchor pretty much holds it. But you want to go backwards here, you don't want to skip any. Okay, we just keep going. I'm going a little fast. But you can see that I'm, all I'm doing is taking the one behind the one on each end. Now this part you really need to use your eye. You don't want to skip any because you'll see that there's something wrong when you go to tighten it and you'll have to redo it. So make sure you use your eye and check. And you just keep going backwards all the way around. This is the same principle for the hat that we're going to do a little bit later. And the last one. Now the anchored one could come out of that anchored spot. It did its job. And if you did this right, it should pull equally on both ends. Now you can do this with an odd number, but it's a little easier to do it with an even number. And you tighten them. 
Now there's a point where the leaves are going to kind of buckle on the other side and you're going to have to stop and make some more adjustments. But I'll show you that in just a second. This is about as far as I can get it before it just doesn't want to go much further. So then you turn it over and if you notice these leaves in here are kind of cupped, sort of in cave, just like the other basket I showed you. Anyway, you want to lift them using your index finger and your thumb to kind of help. Yeah, you just look over my shoulder there, you can see it pretty clear. You just lift them up, each and every one of them need to be adjusted. I'm going a little fast, but I'm basically just lifting them. And instead of an in cave, I'm making it concave. Some say it looks like a turbine. And that's pretty much done. Then we turn it back over to the tightening. And because I made this adjustment, the tightening goes a little further now than it did before. And it also looks better from the inside and the outside. Now I'm going to check again and probably make another adjustment. But I'm going to tighten it up as much as it'll go before I do that. Turn it over. It looks pretty good. But we still have a few here that need to be a little bit bent in like that. Okay, we're just making a little adjustment. I'm using my finger on the other side to kind of push the leaf up so that it's rounded. Yeah. There we go. This adjustment is very important and you won't find it in any of the books that they have on the subject. So that's adjusted fairly good. Now we go back to tightening again and it even tightens a little further now. It seems that the more you adjust it, the tighter you can get it and the more beautiful it looks. Then you could pull one at a time and kind of push it down a little ways. Now in the direction that the leaf points, it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. The leaves are pointing sort of in a counterclockwise. That's the direction we're going to weave to fill in the space. And basically all you're doing is you're going over and under and up to fill in that space. It's almost like weaving a, a checkerboard mat, but it's on an angle a little bit. And just pull that up. It's very much the same as the other basket that we did earlier. Um, And even here, if you see that the leaf's trying to bend the wrong way, you can adjust it as well. Adjusting may occur throughout the whole basket. Let's see, we're going to keep going. Adjusting only means you're helping the leaf sit in the right direction. Yeah, a lot of this type of weaving is a lot of repeating. There's a lot of similarities to some of the baskets. Adjusting the leaf, shaving the stalk down, tying it with string. Okay, we're just gonna do the last one. And now that we filled in that space, it's only gonna go down one more time. It's not gonna come back up. And this is where you could use your hand on the opposite side just to pull it through. You have one hand on one side, putting it in, and the other side pulling it through. Okay. It's amazing that these people in Polynesia were able to figure this out. Because when I tried to do this without the teacher and just try it on my own after seeing it being done, I couldn't figure it out at all. But after seeing it done and listening to the teacher's voice and writing notes too, I like to write notes down. Anything you could do to help you remember. It's really just a process of remembering each step and then perfecting it. And we turn it over. 
And there's still some more adjusting that we're going to do here. Sometimes you're limited to how much you can adjust it. But however much you can, do the best you can. You see a leaf that's bent a little different than the others, try to fix it. And you can use your fingers on both sides. Yeah. See that little bend? You just sort of help it to unbend. Have to get that lens cover out of the way. Okay, just sort of pull it up. Just a matter of adjusting each one. Okay, you could step back just a little bit with the camera. And just adjust it and tighten it. Adjust it and tighten it. The books really do not show you any of this adjusting. That's why it's important to remember. And, and no matter how good you weave, you have to adjust it. Even if the combination is correct, just pulling it alone will not fix it. And that's about it. That's about as far as I can get it. And then in the direction the leaf points, which is basically on the inside wall here, you can uh, just follow it up and pull it through. And this is a deeper bowl than the one we did earlier. They call it calabash. Yeah, the longer the leaf, the more you could weave it. Yeah, the longer the leaf, the more you could weave it. So when you're looking for leaves, you really want to look for the longest leaves and the largest stalks. The longer the stalk, the more leaves you're going to get. And you just sort of guide it up through there. And we're pretty much done with this one. You just have to uh, follow it up. And this will dry in about three weeks to a month. It should last you 20, 30 years, especially if you keep it dry. Uh, it is water resistant a little bit, but if you leave it sitting wet for days and days, it'll get moldy, it won't last. Um, it's non-toxic, it's really a miracle tree. is basically done and just like I did with the last basket whatever is a remainder you just cut it away like this little piece that's sticking out here I'm going to cut them all at the same time though after I finish this step basically it's just steps if you follow each step you two can also get it done right Let's see I got my knife somewhere here and you basically just pull the leaf into the blade. There's no need to saw the leaf because you might slip and cut into the basket. So you just sort of pull the leaf onto the blade. And even at this point, if you see any leaf that's sort of bent the wrong way, you can adjust it. See like this right here? You fix that. You see anything that looks a little bit off, can kind of fix it and then you push these kind of down so you can't see where they were cut and that's it for this basket